Alrighty guys, so we're coming up on the Stave Powerhouse. So I did a video on this on my channel last time. Make sure you go check this video out. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna talk about all three of these together. So this is the new powerhouse, and that's the old powerhouse. The old powerhouse is now a museum. The new one is just an active BC Hydro facility. It's a seasonal attraction. So Stave Falls, you can see there's the gate. That's restricted, personnel only, BC Hydro. So just get out. Duh. Take a look at some stuff. So welcome to the Stave Powerhouse. We did a video on this last time about like the actual hydro station, the Stave station, uh, really iconic looking. But this time we're gonna talk about the Alouette Stave and Ruskin power generation complex. So it's a series of dams, the Stave Dam, the Ruskin Dam, and then the Alouette Dam, and a tunnel system. And these four dams together work to generate power for the Mission Maple Ridge area. So to start off, we've got the Alouette Station. So Alouette River Valley basically was dammed back in the 20s and 30s, which created a reservoir. At the same time that they created this reservoir, the Alouette Lake Reservoir, there was a tunnel that goes under the mountain and feeds into Stave Lake. Now Stave Lake used to be a river. It was about a third of its size that it is today, but it turned into a huge lake that's Stave Lake today. And the Stave Mud Flats, it's really cool. It's just this really muddy, boggy, beachy kind of area that people will go and, you know, do some off-roading in and all kinds of stuff. So it's pretty fun to go just play in the mud, frankly, at Stave. It's, it's awesome. So you've got Stave Lake, which is caused by the damming of the Stave Dam here and the Blind Slough Dam on the other side. And then as well, you've got the Hayward Lake Dam, Ruskin Dams, the Ruskin Dam and it creates Hayward Lake, which creates power. So you've got three lakes, basically. You've got Alouette Lake, Stave Lake, and Hayward Lake. And the three of these lakes together work to provide water and power the dams, basically. So Alouette Lake is more of like a, just like a reservoir. Like there's no actual generating station on Alouette Lake, but there's a generating station on the tunnel side. So. The tunnel goes under Alouette Lake into Stave Lake, and on the tunnel side of Stave Lake, there's a generating station, little eight megawatt generating station, but it's quite remote. Last time I heard it wasn't running just because of the logistics of it, small amount of power, it's dangerous for workers and things like that. But the Alouette Reservoir provides water to the Stave Reservoir, you know, when water levels fluctuate and stuff, because they need a certain amount of pressure to spin the turbines at a certain RPM to generate the power they need. So this tunnel goes underneath the mountains and comes into Stave Lake and then the water from Stave Lake flows through this dam here, the Stave Powerhouse, down through this canyon here, the Stave Canyon near Stave Falls, then flows into Hayward Lake and then through the Ruskin Dam and then out into the Fraser. So it's a whole thing. So we're just gonna go look at some power line stuff because uh, it's pretty interesting. There's a lot of power line infrastructure around here, obviously, because they're generating power. Let's go take a look at it. Power in the towers. You are looking at the top section of a 27 meter high transmission tower. Some of the tallest towers in the BC Hydro system are 120 meters, as high as a 36 story building. You can see the tops of transmission towers that help carry power from Northern BC dams to substations around the lower mainland. In British Columbia, 17,800 kilometers of transmission lines transport high voltage electricity from the generating stations where it's created to local substations where it's distributed. Transmission lines carry power across mountains, rivers, and valleys in British Columbia, and also to Alberta and the United States. The transmission system is designed to carry 69, 138, 230, 287, 360, and 500 kilovolts. In the winter of 1999, we experienced record high snow levels. The legs on BC Hydro transmission towers were designed to withstand up to six meters of snow, but in the Squamish area, the snow level was so high, over 12 meters in some locations, that the pressure from the snow sliding down the slope damaged 20 towers. The repair crews had to use helicopters to reach them, and the work was dangerous and slow. The cleared corridors under BC Hydro transmission lines are called right-of-way. BC Hydro does not usually own the land, but do own the rights to use the corridors for power transmission. Many turn into community trails, bike paths, and wildlife areas, 
or used for commercial purposes like cattle grazing and packing. The steel is just at the top section of a 27 meter high dead end transmission tower. If you placed all pieces of the full tower end to end, it would reach 1.3 kilometers. Dead end towers are used at the start and end of all lines. A suspension tower has continuous conductor through it and it is used as a support point along the line. Because of all the coastal fjords in BC, we have some of the longest line spans in the world, some crossing over more than a kilometer. In North America, overhead bare conductors with no insulation are named after flowers and birds. The BC Hydro System commonly uses daisy conductors as well as tulip, orchid, partridge, and hawk. In Britain, conductors are named after large animals such as bear and moose, which is surprising since they don't actually have any of those creatures in their country. Interesting statistics on the structure. Its height is 27 meters, it weighs 23,000 kilograms, number of bolts needed is 3,000, tension capability is 240,000 pounds, number of hours needed to assemble a tower is 1,140, replacement cost of steel, 250,000 life expectancy more than 50 years. Three styles of 500 kilovolt dead end hardware are displayed on this transmission tower. Triple string, 21 insulators per string. Mass, 1,007 kgs designed to take up to 30 insulators per string. Double string, this is the most common design used in BC Hydro, 21 insulators per string. 820 kg mass designed to take up to 40 insulators per string. And then single string, 28 insulators per string, the mass 220 kilos. So this transmission tower, guys, this is where the whole thing starts for the actual moving of the power is transmission lines. You can't really move it without transmission lines. But you can see those are the cables and then these are the insulators and then they're just attached to the top of the tower. And you can see there's a single, so they've got a single cable, triple string connector, and then a double string connector. So these are different types of power transmission lines available just connected with bolts and then we'll go look at the pelton wheel just because the pelton wheel is really really important the pelton wheel is what's going to drive the turbine create the power that makes this whole show work this pelton wheel was once used at the Hualich generating station in hope which came into service in 1952 so basically guys it's just mounted on a shaft and then water comes into these bin things and then the force of that water dropping into these moves the Pelton wheel, which causes the whole shaft to spin, which then moves the generator, which creates power. That's the old stage powerhouse. And then this is the BC Hydro Dam. This whole complex generates power for Mission, Maple Ridge, Fluoride's flood control too. It'd be interesting to see what it looks like underneath here. So we're gonna go to the Hayward Lake Dam now. And like I said, if you wanna go to the mud flats, there's an FSR over there for service road, which takes you up to the mud flats. A lot of fun, guys. If you wanna go mudding, make sure you have a good rig though, like off-roading, because uh, it's basically a massive mud pool, and if you get stuck in there, it can be really problematic. I've seen some interesting scenarios for guys. But this is Dave Lake, guys. Look, you can see the gates. There's a gate there. The Blind Slough Dam is on this side too. There's two, there's the Stave Dam and then the Blind Slough Dam right here. Here we go, this is the Blind Slough Dam. You can see the track for the crane to move on to. More of a flood control dam, guys. Like I said, the biggest thing you can tell for dams, anytime there's power lines and a substation, then it's gonna be power generation. If there's nothing, it's just like a gate and a dam, that's usually flood control. So, and in the rainforest too, guys, we're right up in the mountains. Believe it or not, this is still considered Metro Vancouver. So my switchbacks too, what was fun. Up the mountain we go. It's really busy here in the summertime. Hiking trails. This is one of the nicer places to come in the Vancouver area. So this is the third dam in the line of basically Alouette's first, which is the reservoir. Then there's the tunnel that goes under the mountains into Stave Lake and Alouette supplies Stave Lake with water. And then Stave Lake is controlled by the generating station and the Blind Slough Dam, which we just saw. And then the water continues on into this area, here, Hayward Lake, Ruskin Dam area. And then it finally exits out of the Ruskin Dam into the Fraser River, and that's it. So you're using the water over. You hear the stuff about hydroelectricity with dams is not ecologically friendly. And from the standpoint of, yeah, okay, it floods a whole valley or it floods a region. Yes, that is environmentally destructive, but the movement of water is, is energy, guys. 
in any form. So like, like no matter how many times you use it, you can reuse it. So the whole point of the stave generating station is that you use it at the stave falls generating station. Then you use it at the Ruskin generating station. Alouette Lake is basically just a water reservoir. There's no power generation going on there. Alouette Lake is actually quite far up. Like it's a good hour and a bit drive up a service road and, and there's nothing. It's quite hard to reach this. Like even though it's in the greater Vancouver area, it's actually an hour and a half drive to get to Mission Hospital. And then Stave is the primary, you know, main show. It's got the Blind Slew Dam, Stave Powerhouse Museum, and then the actual modern generating station that they're using and then we've got this one so we're coming up on the hayward generating station like we did with the stave dam we're just going to drive across this one this is hayward lake and then that's the the last chink in the chain basically and then it's out to fraser river Alrighty, guys so here we are hayward lake so that's the ruskin dam there railway trail so yeah this is the rail grade guys this would be the rail grade here that's Hayward Lake, and then that's the Ruskin Dam. Third of the three for power generation. The railway trail follows the old railway bed that serviced the operation at Stave Falls Powerhouse prior to the development of road access. The railway trail also serves as a transmission line route for BC Hydro. The Powerhouse Visitor Center, right? The Blind Slew Dam. So this is the Stave Falls Dam, Stave Powerhouse, the Blind Slew Dam, and then everything comes out of here into this reservoir area Hayward Lake Reservoir we are here and then this is Ruskin Dam and Powerhouse here and then the Stave River so this whole thing is a river and a lake so it's simultaneously the Stave River as well as being Hayward Lake and Stave Lake at the same time it works like any other dam guys they control the gates to mediate flow and then when they need more power they let more water out or when they need less power they let less water out and it's all controlled by the RPM Ruskin Powerhouse 1930 and there is gold around here so i do wonder how much gold has been buried by some of these dams especially up near higher up on stave lake up more in the mountains there's been some gold findings volcanic brown had a claim around here so there is gold in the area and there has been mining operations done check it out guys rainforest you can see we got ferns lichen moss trees that's going to conclude the alouette stave ruskin power generation complex it's pretty straightforward there's nothing too crazy about it like no biggest dams in the world or trailblazing technology it's all very basically what you saw in the safe powerhouse video if you haven't checked out my safe powerhouse video make sure you check it out take a look at it it's really really cool guys explains all the power generation equipment and what the inside of these powerhouses looks like and what's going on with that so don't forget to like and subscribe to the video leave a comment uh, i'd love to hear your guys comments they're always good and uh, that's going to be it for me, guys. Sasquatch Prospector out.